Have you ever heard the story of the 52 Hertz whale, the loneliest whale in the world? This whale is forced to be socially isolated because its communication frequency is different from other whale species. Or the lyrics, modern loneliness, we're never alone, but always depressed. Yes, a line from Lauv's song, modern loneliness, really captures the essence of modern life lately. As the renowned writer Charles Bukowski said, loneliness is a strange feeling, worse than any physical pain one can experience. Together with us, we will explore and understand loneliness from different perspectives. So, are you ready? Let's begin. The feeling of loneliness is a universal experience that can be felt by all living beings. Loneliness amidst crowds, loneliness in the process of seeking deep connections, and even loneliness due to communication difficulties. Ironically, in this modern era, we live in a time that allows us to be constantly connected, 24-7, unlike any other time in human history. We have all sorts of technology and social media platforms to interact with one another. But who would have thought that the number of people feeling lonely is growing? According to research, in the UK, 60% of people aged 18 to 34 say they often feel lonely. In the United States, 46% of the population experiences regular loneliness. Indonesia, the fourth most populated country in the world, known for its collective culture, is not immune to the phenomenon of loneliness. Approximately 14.3% of the Indonesian population often feels lonely, especially due to the pandemic that has physically limited our movement. So, we can see that loneliness is no longer an occasional occurrence but has become a chronic issue for millions of people across the world. Although they may seem similar at first, there are fundamental differences between loneliness and solitude. Loneliness refers to a feeling of isolation and disconnection from others. Someone who feels lonely may feel like they lack friends to interact with or that nobody cares about them. Sometimes, they may still feel lonely even when surrounded by a crowd. On the other hand, solitude is a matter of choice. Someone with this mindset chooses to be in a state of solitude and can enjoy that time for themselves. Solitude can provide an opportunity for someone to reflect on important matters in their life or engage in activities they enjoy without any interruptions. During this time, we can also replenish our energy or pursue personal interests. Thus, the fundamental difference between loneliness and solitude lies in the sense of isolation and lack of social connection experienced in each. However, it is important to remember that feelings of loneliness and solitude can vary for each individual depending on their situation and personal preferences. It's common to assume that loneliness only happens to people who don't know how to talk to others or are not socially adept. In fact, research shows that social skills have little influence on adult social connections. Loneliness can affect anyone, regardless of how much money, fame, power, beauty, or social skills they possess. Why is that? Because loneliness is part of our biological nature as humans. Like hunger, loneliness acts as an alarm for us to pay more attention to our social needs in life. Now, to understand the roots of loneliness in humans, we need to look back at our ancestors. Millions of years ago, collaboration and social relationships were key to survival. That's why our brains developed to become more sensitive in understanding others' thoughts and feelings, as well as forming and maintaining social bonds. Social life became ingrained in our biology. Our ancestors lived in groups of 50 to 150 individuals and depended on each other for survival. Being together meant survival while choosing to be alone meant opening the door to death. Thus, it was important for them to connect with others. Unfortunately, as we entered the modern era, loneliness became more prevalent. During the Renaissance, Western culture began to focus on individualism. Then, with the shift into the Industrial Revolution, this tendency increased. People left their villages and fields to work in factories, leading to the fragmentation of communities that had existed for centuries, 
while cities continued to grow. It is not uncommon for us to move far away and live as migrants due to work, love, or education, leaving behind the social networks we had established. We rarely meet people like we used to in our hometowns. In the United States, the average number of close friends decreased from three in 1985 to two in 2011. Many people unknowingly find themselves trapped in chronic loneliness due to time constraints and life priorities. As a result, many things change within us due to loneliness. The impact of loneliness on our health is serious. Research shows that the stress caused by chronic loneliness is one of the unhealthiest experiences we can have as humans. Loneliness can accelerate the aging process, worsen cancer conditions, expedite the development of Alzheimer's, weaken our immune system, and loneliness is even twice as deadly as obesity and equally lethal as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. The greatest danger arises when loneliness becomes chronic, spreading and growing as an influence that is difficult to stop. In other words, experiencing loneliness can significantly increase the risk of death. If loneliness has become a significant part of our lives, the first thing we need to do is recognize the negative cycle we are experiencing. Typically, initial feelings of loneliness bring tension and sadness. This makes us tend to focus on negative interactions with others, leading to increasingly negative thoughts about ourselves and others. Consequently, we start to avoid social interactions, which further plunges us into loneliness. This cycle worsens, making it increasingly difficult for us to break free. However, there is hope to break free from this cycle of loneliness. First, we must acknowledge and accept the feeling of loneliness itself instead of denying or hiding it. Next, we can start taking action by meeting new people or engaging in activities we enjoy. Start with small steps, such as inviting a friend to have lunch, joining clubs or engaging in exciting community activities aligned with our interests, or even contributing as a volunteer. This will help us expand our social network and feel more connected to others. Although loneliness cannot be avoided, let's continue to think positively and focus on things that give us meaning and happiness. Discover what we enjoy, what makes us feel alive, and other things that are worth pursuing. Don't be surprised or puzzled because in the process of seeking meaning in life and deeper connections, we will also discover ourselves. Don't be afraid to share our experiences, stories, and feelings with others. Be a good listener and support our friends on their journeys. In the end, we are all human beings who want to be loved, accepted, and feel connected to others. The story about loneliness should come to a pause here. We have explored various aspects, from its concept to its impact on our health, and how to cope with it. Remember, loneliness is a common experience that we can face together. Remember that we are not alone in this experience, and there is always a way out of loneliness if we are willing to make a change. Together, we can create a meaningful and happy life. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends so they don't feel overwhelmed by loneliness in life.